G'day guys, welcome to Yeah Now Beauty. My name is Tanya and I'm your personal little guinea pig and today I thought we'd do something just a little bit low key, a little bit laid back and just have a little bit of fun really. I mean with everything that's going on lately, why not just kick back and have a little bit of fun? So today what I thought I would do, I think I mentioned if you guys are on my Instagram, I mentioned over there that I was thinking about doing like one half of my face with certain products and then doing the other half of my face with other products that I own. None of these products are bad, they're just like I've got products that I love and I've got products that I've sort of forgotten about because I'm using new products or new to me products. So I thought that maybe we could just kick back, have a little bit of fun, talk about the makeup. But um, before we get started, I wanted to let you know that in no way, shape or form am I a makeup guru or am I any good at actually makeup application. However, I do know what I like, I do know what quality is and um, I just thought we could have a little bit of fun. Also, uh, before we get into the video, I do want to mention that I do intend on doing we're attempting to do the same look on both eyes using two different palettes. Um, we'll see how that goes. If I don't have a um, two uh, two of the same items but different brands, then I'll use the same thing. Um, for example, I have this um, Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder. I only have one of them, so I'll use that over both sides of the face. But I'll tell you that in the video. And to keep it fair, I'm going to use the exact same tools for application on both sides so we can make sure that um, both sides are well pretty much equal fair so if you're interested in watching something like this uh, just kick it back and have a little bit of fun let's get started see how it goes all right so the first thing that we're going to do is um, I'm going to put some moisturizer on because I haven't done that. I'm going to use the same moisturizer on my face only because I have super sensitive skin and the moisturizer that my skin is loving um, is the Clinique Dramatically Different Moisturizing Lotion Plus. I have tried other things. I even was recommended the, um, what's it called? <laughs> my brain. You know, I can never recall things when I want to recall them. Anyway, it's a... Uh, it's a cheaper brand and it's supposed to be pretty much the same thing, but my skin just didn't love it as much as it's loving this. So um, I'm going to put this one on, guys. Hmm. There we go. Now, next thing that I would do is normally I would put some um, primer on it. Now, I've just run out of the primer that I was enjoying and I do feel like that it did make a difference. Um, I do agree with some of the beauty gurus that sometimes some primers really don't do shit. Um, but I disagree with them that all primers are shit. I have seen some quite uh, dramatic differences when using some primers. So on my right hand side of my face, I am going to use the, I've got a sample of the Hourglass um, Veil, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Hourglass Veil. I've used this before. I really enjoyed this, so I'm going to use this instead of my normal um, Too Faced Hangover RX primer. So I'm going to use that on this side of the face. And on the right hand side, I am going to go in with the Maybelline Master Prime, which is okay, but I think it's just like a moisturizer, really. I don't see that. I mean, there is a, a, a little bit of difference when I use it. That is why I still use it and why I haven't thrown it out. But, you know, not enough to, um, not enough for me to want to purchase it over trying something else. So, hmm, all right. I'm just going to remember that we're only doing half the face. I do love the way that this one feels going on. It's um it's hard to explain. It's it's the weirdest sensation. It's kind of it feels kind of powdery. Um, but I mean it's it's not powdery. It, I can't explain it. Right, just a little bit more. Yep. There's that side, and now the Master Prime Maybelline Master Prime on the other side. My skin's not doing great at the moment. Um, I've sort of been slacking off on my regular routine. Everything's sort of a little bit off lately, understandably. Um, yeah, just been trying to get myself out of a rut lately with all this stuff that's going on, guys, and the self-isolation stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, 
yeah, not being able to leave the house. <sighs> it does get to me a little bit. All right, so that is primer done. Now for foundation, I am going to go in on the right hand side with my most recent purchase, which is the Clinique Beyond Perfecting um, Foundation and Concealer. I'll give that a little bit of a shake first. Um, I enjoy this, but I'm not sure how much, I don't know, I like, it doesn't matter which foundation I'm using at the moment, I'm not 100% happy with the, the end results. This one covers up quite a lot. It's it's not like full, full coverage, but it's close to it. And um, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit uncomfortable with that because when I do put it on, um, I, I really am starting to feel like I look weird to others. Um, yeah, so I don't, I don't know. So I'm gonna go in with my um, Ella sponge, which I absolutely love. This is the only sponge that I will use. And we will try and remember to only go half the face. Bring that hairline a little bit. Goes on quite nicely, feels nice when it goes on too. Yep, pretty happy with that. So there we go. Is that side done? I think it's a pretty good match. I don't even really need to go down my neck with that one. And on the other side, we are going to go in with the L'Oreal Paris True Match. Um, I didn't tell you the shade for the uh, Clinique. The shade is Breeze. And the shade of the L'Oreal Paris True Match is... Uh... 1.5 neutral linen. So this one is shake. This one's probably going to be a little bit darker. I don't know. So I, I do think this one's going to be a little bit darker. So we're just going to dot this one all over the skin. I might just leave it at that and put more on if I need to. Hopefully it doesn't oxidize too much. I can't remember, it's been a while since I've used this one. Is my nose just a little bit better? Might just increase the coverage just a little bit here, because that's the spot that I'm uncomfortable with the most. I think they're not too far different. I think this one might be just a fraction darker, but it's not, that's not, I couldn't not leave the house like this. I could still go down with two different, two different colors, I reckon. Not bad, I might get my trusty mirror, just so I can have a little bit look of a close up. Hmm. I think both of them work quite all right with each other, considering that I paid a quite a little bit for this one and this one was, I mean, I'm not going to say that this was cheap because it wasn't in Australia. This is still like 40 bucks. Um, but I think I paid 60 for this one. Hmm. This one definitely does give more coverage. So, moving on, we are going to do um, concealer. Now, hmm. Concealer is a funny one for me. Um, it doesn't matter what concealer I use, especially under my eyes. I'm still going to... Um, I'm still going to have the lines, it's still going to sink into the lines no matter whether I set it, whether I don't. If I do set it, it's going to look, it's going to make me look older. Um, somebody mentioned um, on social media somewhere about using a eyeshadow, um, an eyeshadow primer under the eye to reduce the um, settling into fine lines. I'm going to try that I reckon and I reckon I might catch back with you guys. I'm not going to try it today but I might try it somewhere off camera and let you guys know if that works because if that works that could be a game changer. I mean I wouldn't normally buy eyeshadow primer. I would normally use like just a concealer because that works for me 
but if the eyeshadow primer works under the eyes and I don't get any creasing, I'll go out and buy one, I definitely will. So anyway, let's move on, not too much yapping because this is going to be a long video as it is. On the right hand side I'm going to use the Maybelline, uh, I think it's the Fit Me, yeah, the Maybelline Fit Me in Ivory. So I just keep forgetting to shake these. Alright, not going to use too much hopefully. Now these are definitely um, different shades, these two concealers that I'm going to be using. Um, the other one I'm not going to use on my face, but I am going to just spot conceal just a little bit. Hmm, don't really have too much. I'm going to go over with it. Oh, no, I better not. I'll stay over and do it. I will spot conceal with it so you can see the difference. But anyway, so let's go with this one. Gonna bring that up over the eyelid just a little bit because I'm gonna do it anyway. So, all right, that's about as much as I would put on underneath my eye. So, we're gonna move that one out of the way. And then we're gonna move on to the other side, which we are going to use the L'Oreal Paris Infallible more than a concealer. So, what I like about this one, strangely, is this big old applicator stick. I mean, it's it's massive, but I like it. What I don't like about this is that it's centered and when I use it, I get a little bit of tingling. I don't really react, but I get a little bit of tingling, it makes me uncomfortable. So I'm not gonna use too much of this. And like I said, we are going to spot conceal with this, even though I wouldn't use this one to spot conceal with, but I have just a little bit of eczema that shows up as a blemish over there. And I might just cover up a couple of these freckles. Just, just a little bit. Right. Here we go. I'm going to use my mirror to do this one. I should have just tapped that one in with my finger. Oh well. Mm, yeah, okay, that one's a bit bright up there. I think I'm kind of spotlighting that one. I think this one's just a little bit too bright too guys I mean I do like the under eyes to be brightened up a little bit but not not extreme like hmm all right now it's not too bad like I said I don't actually really like that one um, for under the eyes to be honest with you I think that it's just a little bit too bright um, this was the shade ivory 322 ivory so hmm. anyway um we are going to use some powders to set some parts of the face, like definitely under the eyes, maybe the um, the smile lines and possibly the forehead. So on the right hand side, I am going to use the Australis Fresh and Flawless Powder. This one's new to me and I'm enjoying it, um, which is funny because I can't usually say that I enjoy powders. Um, since the other one that I'm going to be using is a loose powder, and I'd rather not use it on my sponge. I'm going to get a brush. I'm just not sure which brush yet. Um, all right, let's go with this. What are you? We're going to go with an e.l.f. brush. And yeah, it's a powder brush. So the e.l.f. powder brush. Just a bit of a dab there, tap it off. And we're just going to gently put that underneath the eye. Not too much little bit on this side of the forehead, a little bit in the smile line in my nose too, and just a little bit over where I'm going to put other powder products just so we have a nice blend. And on the other side, I am going to use the um, Maybelline Master Fix Setting Perfecting Loose Powder. So I've had this for a while, but I stopped using it. I don't know why I stopped using it. Um, probably because powders were not very good for me. They kind of make me look dry and crunchy. But anyway, um, I think I've just been trying to find the right kind of powder. Um, I'm using a colour switch, by the way, when I'm using brushes. I'm just going to take a bit of that powder, tap it off in here. That's a lot of product. And once again, just gently sweeping it under the eyes, over the forehead. 
in the nose, a bit more. Just minor lines and just gently over the areas that I'm going to add more powder products to. Alright, and that is powder. Have a quick look, see how that's going. Hmm. They both look pretty alright to me. I mean, um, I do like this side of the face just a little bit better at the moment, but we will see. Alright, so that is done. Next we are going to go on to... We're going to bronze first, I think. So on the right hand side, I'm going to use the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer in the shade Bronzer. Um, this is the one that I'm mainly using. I love this, but um, if you guys follow me, you know that I absolutely hate the smell of this. It gives me a headache. So what I did was for about a week, I left it open. Not quite that full, but you know, just I opened just enough to air it out. And um, don't get me wrong, the smell is still there, but it's nowhere near as intense. So I am going to use um, a no-name blush brush, I guess, or contour brush. I don't know. I used to call these ones, these angular ones, um, blush brushes. I don't really know what they are. So that's what I'm going to use for this one. I thought I was putting on blush for a minute. I tricked myself. I'm going to bring it up a bit. Try and hide that double chin that's happening. Get a bit of warmth back in the face because I look white. Hmm. I really do love this. Um, underneath all these camera lights and um, or recording lights and everything, it is hard to know whether you're putting too much on. Um, I'm not too worried though because I'll go over with a little bit of a brush afterwards. A clean brush afterwards and just sort of meld it all together and on the other side I am going to use this um, Emco Beauty matte bronzer um, this is a new brand to me I got this in a makeup subscription box don't know if it's gonna be any good so let's have a bit of a play huh put some on a bit of a tap look all awkward I'll just be a little bit gentle with where I put this. Stupid hair. Excuse the hair. <laughs> Try and hide that again. Hmm. It's definitely there. It looks a lot brighter on camera, I think. Just sort of blend that just a little bit into the hairline, a little bit more. And I think, guys, I might just bounce my um, moist sponge just over both sides to try and get them to melt in just a little bit more to my liking. I think this side is just a little bit warmer, I feel. Maybe. I don't know. It's not bad, but... I'm more comfortable using the butter bronzer one, to be honest with you. And the next one we're going to go in with, we are going to do blush. So I recently picked up um, a, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna murder the name, Jouet, um, Duo Blush. And I have tried this and I can tell you guys that I absolutely love this formula. But what I am a little bit disappointed with, and I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to show you, but um, the casing, absolutely beautiful, but right on the end here, um, and yeah, I'm not going to be able to show you, it's actually lifted, um, which has pissed me off a little bit because they're not exactly cheap. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I think that the casing for these are poorly made, and um, I love the product, though. So today we are going to, I'm actually going to swirl my brush in both those shades and just whop it on. So I'm going to um, use the same brush as I used for the bronzer, but it has been switched, colour switched. So I'm just going to go in a bit of there, a bit of there, tap it off, and I'm going to smile. And just dab her on. It's a, um, it's a subtle brush, but it can, uh, it's a subtle blush, but it definitely can be built up, and I really enjoy it. I really do. I normally bring my, um, 
bronzer over my nose just a little bit and I didn't do that this time so I'm gonna I'm gonna do it with the blush instead just a little bit just to add a little bit of color so it's just it's very subtle but I absolutely love that I could build that up more but I'm not going to because to be honest with you I'm not going anywhere special so this is just for around the house and on the other side, I'm going to go in with this Rimmel Maxi Blush in the shade Exposed. So I didn't tell you what was um, what shade these were. This is the uh, Adore um, Blush Duo with uh, one shade is Adore Me and the other one is Hold Me. So um, it will be, where's the lighter one? This one is Hold Me and this one is Adore Me. Fantastic, both beautiful, alone, mixed together, great, love it. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna move on to the Rimmel Maxi Blush in the shade Exposed. This one's definitely a little bit more um, mauve, so this could look completely redonkulous, but I don't care, because I don't have another sort of peachy blush. That was my first one that I've ever tried, and I absolutely love it, I'm happy. So I'm just gonna be a bit gentle with this one. I really do enjoy this though, this colour. It's um, it's kind of, I don't know, like I want to say winter, sort of like you go out and it's a little bit crispy cold and your face flushes a little bit. But then again, I also get like spring vibes with it. I don't know. Anyway, I enjoy that and that is as much as I'm going to do. Absolutely adore it. Once again, going to go in with my sponge guys and I'm just going to meld it in just a little bit because although my makeup you can definitely tell that I'm wearing makeup I've just got I've got that kind of skin um, I don't like to look I don't like to look extremely done up so we are now going to move into highlighter I think actually no I'm now going to run that um, that hourglass ambient um, lighting powder all over my face. Um, I don't have more than one shade, I've only got dim light, but I really enjoy the way that this sort of, I don't know, I don't know whether it really does anything for me. Unfortunately, I brought the wrong shade. It's not that I can't use this shade, I can, but I really wanted to get ethereal because I like that moonlight kind of look. This one's just supposed to give a little bit of a filter, I guess, and um, just having a quick look at my skin, it's not doing too bad. So I'm going to get the biggest fluffy brush that I have, which unfortunately is a no name, and the hairs fall out all over the place, but that's what I've got, that's what we're working with. I am just going to dab that pretty much all over my face because I can. It's probably not the way that it's supposed to be used, but this is my channel, I do what I want. <laughs> I do enjoy this. It does it does do something. I just I'd like to get some more and have a real good play with them, to be honest with you. I'll put that under my eyes as well. I mean, that's where I pretty much need most of the filtering. You know what I've realized? I haven't done my brows. We'll do the um we'll do the highlighter and then I'll do my brows, I reckon, before we go on to um doing eyeshadow so the next thing that we are going to go on with is like I said the highlighter and on this side of the face I am going to use the benefit cookie highlighter which uh, was gifted to me by um, Teresa is dead and I'm very much appreciative because I freaking love this stuff and um, we are going to use what are we going to use I'm going to use this uh, flower beauty brush doesn't say what kind of a brush it is but it's this poofy poofy one, you know. Um, I think it's a highlighter and blush brush. Whatever. That's what we're going to use. It deposits the highlighter on quite subtly. It's not aggressive. But everything can be built up, obviously. That's beautiful. I love that. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I can and I love it. It's not too extreme it can be extreme if you want like I could just dab my finger in there and then build it up and you'd be like damn girl <laughs> um yeah but no I I just I like I like in between subtle and extreme so on the other side I am going to use an Ofra highlighter in the shade blissful which was gifted to me by one of Teresa's followers oh my gosh and I've forgotten her name 
I will leave it up here. My bad, I apologise, but this is absolutely gorgeous as well. This is a mini. I'm going to use the same brush, but I'm going to use the colour switch first. And we're just going to swirl in there like that, get some product, and do the same thing. Awkward here. Well, that one's a little bit more extreme. We got cut off quite rudely. So anyway, I was just applying the um, the Ofra highlighter in the shade Blissful. If you can see that there, I think it is absolutely stunning. I love it. So we have Blissful on this side and Cookie on that side. I think they're both stunning. I think um, this one is just a little bit uh, more user friendly, I guess. This one's like, whoa. So anyway. Let's just try and run that up there just a little bit. Both beautiful, love them both. They've both got a similar tone to them, I think. Um, actually, let's just have a little bit of an arm swatch. So I'm gonna stick um, Blissful right here. It's beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. And let's get the cookie. And stick that right here. Hmm. Well, definitely different, but um, I mean they've got similar, similar sort of peachy, pinky tones to them. Both stunning. I love them both. I mean. Come time to put highlighter on, it's, it's really hard to know which one to choose. Alright, now we said we were going to move on to brows and I wasn't joking, we are moving on to brows. I am not fantastic at brows, but unlike a lot of YouTubers, I'm not going to do mine off camera. I'm going to show you how I currently do mine, and that is by starting off with, strangely enough starting off with, um, a sort of like a, what do you call it, like a mascara for the eyebrows? I don't know, anyway. Um, I am going to use the L'Oreal Paris Brow Artist Plumper on this side. We're just going to scrape the excess off. I do have to use my mirror for this one, guys. Apologies. I'm going to start off in the middle. That way we don't deposit too much on the front and we don't get a whole heap on the tail because I don't really have a tail at the moment. Do have quite a few hairs that need to be plucked actually. Didn't realise that. So I'm just putting just a little bit of this in just to make them more visible because half my eyebrow towards the um, end sort of turns invisible. So just a little bit there like that, nothing too extreme. And um, I'm going to wait for that side to finish before we move on to the next stage that I do with my brows. And on this side, I'm going to use the Essence Make Me Brow. So both of them really as good as each other. It's, I go to the L'Oreal one just by habit, um, but this one does have quite a nice little stick on it. Um, it does brush through the brows quite nice, but I do prefer that extra length of the stick with the L'Oreal And that's probably why I use the L'Oreal one more often than the Essence to be honest with you I think the Essence one is probably cheaper But um The L'Oreal one's just a little bit easier for me to use to be honest with you Whoops Yeah Yeah, the L'Oreal one's easier to use because of the longer stick and although the um, spoolie, uh, not spoolie, well it's kind of like a spoolie, although the spoolie thing on this is small, um, the shape of the L'Oreal one just happens to work better for my brows. Um, so let's just put a bit more of this on. Okay, that's that. Now we should be able to move on to the next step of the eyebrows and on this side I'm going to use the e.l.f. Um, brow pencil in the colour natural brown. So she's got a spoolie on the end which I do use but not today. This one's very delicate at the moment I've almost run out so apologies for the mirror again but then what I basically do is I just want to fill in the gaps and I definitely want to uh, just gently make a tail, not too much, 
I just don't like my brows to be extremely blocky. I like them to be as natural as possible. And my biggest problem is sparse hairs towards the end and pretty much invisible hairs towards the end. That's pretty much all I'm going to do with that brow, guys. I'm happy with that. And on this side, I'm going to go in with the hmm, Maybelline New York Master Shape in the shade Deep Brown. It's also got a spoolie, but it's kind of crappy. So this one is a little bit old. It's a little bit stiff, but it'll still get the job done. Um, in Australia, um, the ALF one is still not as cheap as it is in America, but it's still cheaper than this Maybelline one. I can't remember the prices, to be honest with you, but same thing. Just going to make a bit of a tail. Fill in the areas and shape my brows just a little bit. This one is nearly due to go into the bin. She's drying up on me. Brush that just a little bit. I'm going to call that done. So at the moment, that's pretty much what I'm doing with my brows. Sometimes I'll go in with a little bit of um, brown shadow. I'm not very good with a pomade, so that, yeah, I just try and keep my brows simple. Just I just want them to be there because I believe that it helps the, um, the whole look come together when you're doing an eyeshadow look. And uh, yeah, so next we are going to go on with, we're going to do the eyes. So I did mention, like I said in my stories, that um, I planned on doing um, some a look from the uh, Juvia's Place, the Violets palette. I haven't done a review on this palette, to be honest with you, because I'm not... I'm not 100% wrapped in the formula. I absolutely love the shimmers. They are stand out to me. And um, if I could just, to be honest with you, pluck out these two mattes and throw in two more shimmers, I'd be laughing. However, I could have gotten away with not actually buying this palette at all, to be honest with you, because the only shadow that I don't really have is this pinky purple one. Um, eh. Everything else I can pretty much dupe out. So what I'm going to do today is I'm not going to do a crazy look. I'm going to take this lighter matte purple um, and one of these um, one of these darker um, shimmer purples and put it on the eye. And I'm going to take on the other side the uh, Jeffree Star Jawbreaker palette because inside that we also have a, uh, a matte purple that's a very, very similar shade to the one in the... Um, the Violets palette, and I'm also going to take this uh, Bite Me shade, this Shivery Purple, I'm going to put it on this side. Um, I can tell you right now that I prefer, much prefer the Jeffree Star formula, but I want to see if I can kind of like pull off the same look pretty much. You guys be the judge of it, you let me know in the comments below, because I kind of feel like that I wasted my money on this, because, I don't know, I was just expecting the formula to be bomb, and... Only the um, shimmers are bomb and I really have to use my fingers to get them the way that I want them looking that way. Whereas the Jawbreaker palette, I can use my fingers, I can use brushes. So this this is disappointing to me, guys. So I'd love to know your thoughts if you have this, if you're disappointed in, um, in the quality uh, hmm, or the application. All right, before we go in with those shadows, though, we are going to put a base down. So normally, I, as I said earlier, I don't normally use a, an eyeshadow primer. I normally just use a um, concealer. Uh, however, since we're doing something on this side, something on this side, today I'm going to use a, um, a primer, an eye primer that I got as a sample. So we are using the Smudge Proof Eyeshadow Base from NARS. So, hmm... I'm going to use some of this on my eye today, but I'm also going to save a little bit of this. And later I'm going to try that little trick and see whether it really does stop creasing. So here we go. I don't really know. I think I might go in with my fingers with this one. Really don't know how much I need. I don't want to put on too much. I might actually bring it up a little bit. So I might take just a little bit more. 
Yeah, fingers is definitely the best way to go with this one. Normally I would put any um, eyeshadow base on with a brush, but what ifs? Oh, right, I think that's enough. Definitely. That feels nice. I might just leave that for a minute though. Um, we'll put that one aside and what I will do is I will put the, um, I'll put the concealer down on the other side because I can just tap it out. So that way I can make sure that I'm actually using this primer correctly. Use the same method. I think I put on too much. Alrighty then, so let's move into the eyeshadows. Um, I think I might actually, oh, I don't know. I don't, I want to give these guys a fair go. So I wouldn't normally set down my, um, my eyeshadow base. Or, I wouldn't normally set down um, the concealer or the eyeshadow base with anything but I don't want to give anything an unfair advantage here so I'm, I'm going to but I'm going to pull it in a completely different palette and use it on both eyes I'm going to pull out the um, Colourpop Fame palette and just take a like a matte cream from that palette and just gently set down the shadow and oh, the Gently set down the concealer or the eyeshadow but, uh, primer. So just so there is no um, unfairness with testing out these eyeshadows. I will build these both up if they need to be, um, so there's going to be no unfairness there. I'm not trying to dupe anyone here. I definitely have uh, my opinion on which one I think is better, but you guys can make your own sort of decisions here. So I'm going to go in with the shade Gumdrop from the Jeffree Star Jawbreaker Palette. So just give it a little bit of a tap. Just going to put it in the crease. It's a little bit dusty, I don't know if you can see that. It's very pigmented straight off the bat though, like I didn't expect it to be this pigmented when I first tried it. I expected it just to be like this dusty pastel um, sort of shade. Now I'm bringing mine up quite high because I do want you guys to see it and I do have hooded deep set eyes. So um, please don't freak out if it touches my brow, I just want you guys to be able to see it. And bring it in. Might dust it in the inner corner here just a little bit too. But like one application right there, I don't feel like I need to go in. I've got the pigment that I actually want from that. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm just going to dust that over the entire eye because it doesn't really matter because I'm going to go over um, with that other that other shade. Like I said, guys, I'm not. this is not going to be a complicated look. I just wanted to try out a couple of shades. Um, in comparison and the only dupes that I feel that I have is those two pastel colors and the um, the darker uh, purple here I believe that I can pretty much get the same thing from either one of those um, purple shimmers that are in the um, in the my gosh in the dubious place the violets so I'm gonna go to the other eye now and I'm going to pull out the dubious place one and we are going to take the shade I don't know because they don't write the names on the palette but the pastel one here so we're just going to dip into that just as much as we possibly can and do the same thing with this eye we're going to go in to the crease and I mean it's still pigmented and it's not it's not a perfect dupe it isn't there is slight different um, tone I think this side's got just a little bit more, um, I don't know, red to it. 
So we're going to dust that as much as we can, bring it in, bring the rest down. See, they're both pretty. I just don't think I need both. I mean, this one's just like a fraction lighter, in my opinion, to this one. Still pretty, whatever. Moving on, we are going to take a, um, a flat brush. This is the Spectrum A16, just a little tiny eye brush. And we are going to go in with the Jeffree Star Jawbreaker palette in the shade uh, Bite Me, this purple one here. So just going to gently, I'm not going to wet it, I'm just going to gently place that there. We are going to have fallout guys. I'm going to need my little mirror to come just a little bit closer. And I'm going to put that all over the lid. Beautiful colour, absolutely stunning. So that's what she looks like with a brush application. Still quite nice. But now I'm going to stick my finger in it, just a little bit, and I'm just going to do tap swipe motion so you can just see that it's a little bit more intense when you use your finger. Got a little bit of fallout down here, which I'm just going to brush away, attempt to brush away. Probably not. This is why you should do your eyes first. I just can't get into that. Right, so that's pretty much, I'm just gonna grab um, that blending brush again. I'm just gonna try and blend these two just a little bit. They're pretty much a very similar sort of shade, just one's shimmery, one's not. So that's that look there. We're gonna cl close up the um, jawbreaker palette. We're gonna switch over and I'm going to take, um, hmm, I'm gonna take this darker shade here. I think they're both um, pretty much like I think that if I could mix these two here to make pretty much the same shade But we'll, we'll see and I'm going to take that same flat shader brush dip into the dark shade And try and get it on the eye Yeah, it's coming I need my brush Where is it? A little bit harder to get on the eye than the other one. Going in for a second dip. Going in for a third dip. Getting frustrated, going in with the finger. Yes. Better, not perfect. I don't like using my finger for eye application, guys, I really don't. Not because I'm grossed out, just because these fingers are chunky, my lid space is a little bit, mm, yeah. It's difficult. It's difficult for me to use my fingers comfortably. I just don't like it. Bit more. Now I'm going to dip this um, blending brush into it just because I want to bring it up, but I don't want to. I don't want to lose anything. So. Yeah, it doesn't blend as nicely. Let's try again. Ah, I feel like I'm just losing the um the matte shade when I do that. So I'm gonna go back in with the um the blending brush into the matte shade just so I don't lose it and just try and re blend those two shades. That's about as good as I'm going to get. I'm not going to do lower eyelid shadow because um, I don't have a darker shade that I want to use under there. I've only got those two colours. 
um, and I also don't want to look sick, which will happen if I do that because I've got quite bulgy under eyes. So, um, so anyway, this is the Jeffree Star side and this is the Juvia's Place, the Violets. So Jeffree Star Jawbreaker palette, Juvia's Place, the Violets. You tell me, do you think I needed both palettes? I do have to say though, where credit is due, the shimmers are beautiful if you can get over using your fingers. Um, and I don't have this shade here. Everything else I couldn't give a shit about. I prefer the formula and the Jeffree Star one. But um, this shade here, cute, cute. Not for the price I paid though. Once you get it over to Australia, it's just not worth it. So anyway, let's move on. I'm going to go on to uh, mascara. Now, unfortunately, my three-year-old destroyed my um, Essence Lash uh, Princess, uh, the green one. It's my favorite mascara of all time. I don't have that, so I am going to have to use the only mascara that I have available to me at the moment, which is the Benefit Bad Girl Bang Mascara. I do like this, but I'm not the pers kind of person who likes to put two layers of mascara on. can be finicky. It can be flaky. Um, it can transfer to my lids, um, so it can be a little bit trickier to use, but I do like it. I just, I'm a one and done kind of girl. I just slap it on, let's go, I want to look good with minimal effort, and this is not a minimal effort for me, so, um, it's nice, but I prefer my Lash Princess, so, um, I'm going to put this on now. So we're going to use this on both eyes. For another dip, we'll do the other side. It's also a lengthening mascara, and I prefer like lengthening and um, volumizing as well. So that's the other thing that I'm not sold on it with. Oh, I think I just transferred. Nope, luckily. I'm trying to figure out if I like it better than the um, Too Faced, uh, better than Sex. And to be honest with you. I think I like the Too Faced better than Sex Mascara than I do this one because that one, it's volumizing more than it is lengthening, but there's lengthening still there. So, hmm. I really want to try um, false lashes. I just, I haven't gone out and brought any. Okay, they don't look natural at all, but whatever. <laughs> that will do. Right, now the only thing that's left to do, really, is um, lips and face sprays. And to be honest with you, I don't have any other face sprays other than these Mario Badesco or Badescu, whatever you want to call it, um, face sprays. And this is just to bring down the sort of powder look on my face. Um, I mean, it's not going to matter if I use this one or this one on either side of the face. So today I'm actually going to use the um, Sage and Blossom instead of the Cucumber and Green Tea. Um, this one's newer to my collection. I got this one because I was running out of this one. And to be honest with you, the cucumber smell, it's not my favourite. So, mmm. Alright, um, and I wanted to get the lavender one, but I ended up picking up this orange blossom one because I couldn't find a full size of the orange blossom and I thought maybe they might be discontinuing it, so I wanted to try it before they got rid of it. So, what I'm going to do is my mascara is pretty much set. I'm just going to blast this on my face, meld everything back in, and then we can get onto the lips. It smells quite nice actually, guys. I really enjoy that. So, I just pretty much after that, um, I'll spray just a little bit here as well. I just pretty much go in and just, what's that? Pretty much go in and just make sure that everything is blended seamlessly. Plus, it also helps to make the um, highlighter bling just a little bit more. I mean, look at that. Hi. <laughs> All right. What is that? Don't know. Whatever. All right, now guys, we are going on to the last step and I am going to do two lipsticks as well. We are not going to skimp out on that. I'm just going to wipe off the lip product that I have on at the moment, which is the, um, well, there's not that much left anymore, but I had on the Fenty Gloss Bomb in the shade Fussy. I love the shit out of that. 
Um, so I'll be back. All right, because I am going to be wearing liquid lips, what I am going to do, and I'm not going to plaster it, but I'm just going to use just a basic old um, lip balm. I don't really like this one. This is by the gr by the brand called Graham's Natural. It's an organic lip balm in the vanilla. It's not great, but I'm not actually going to slack it on. I just want to gently dab it on just a little bit. I do this before I put on any matte liquid lip and on one side now these colors are not going to be perfect I am going to look a little bit different on one side I'm going to use the Too Faced liquefied matte longwear lipstick in the shade I don't remember cool girl and on the other side I'm going to use the Jeffree Star um, velvet liquid lipstick in Christmas cookie so Christmas cookie is going to be on the left hand side that's going to be a little bit more peachy I guess and cool girl is going to be a little bit more light brown tone so here we go I'm not very good at doing my lip lines I should use a lip liner but whatever we're not so meh gotta to remember to do half the lip so All right, so that is Cool Girl by Too Faced, and let's move on to Jeffree Star's Christmas Cookie. Forgot to shake it. And there we go not very good lip application but um yeah I mean I really do love both the formulas um uh, Jeffree Stars and Too Faced. Too Faced is new to me and I really I really love the formula of the um, Too Faced liquid lip but I think I like the longevity of um, Jeffree Star a little bit better but in saying that Though I, I love both the formulas of these liquid lipsticks, I think that um, the liquid lipstick that stays on the longest, in my opinion, is actually a drugstore one, which is the Maybelline Superstay Matte Ink. Those guys, when you put them on, they do not budge, no matter what. I mean, you can eat pizza, pies, you can, you can face smash a burger, and that liquid lip is still on. Usually by the end of the night, you're uh, going to bed, and if you're with a significant other, they're like, you gotta take that off. Um, so whereas these guys, if you eat something, you, it's it's gonna come off. But for the most part, once it dries down, um, either one of these, you know, you shouldn't be able to lick off too much or um, kiss off or anything like that. But um, yeah, I should use the uh, Maybelline Matte Ink ones a little bit more, but I do find that both the Jeffree Star and the Too Faced formula to be far more comfortable than the, um, the Maybelline ones, so I'll definitely wear the Maybelline ones if I need to go out and about and I'm not worried about, like I don't want to worry about having to reapply or anything like that and I'll use these guys when I want to be comfortable and when I'm happy to take them with me in my bag and then reapply them after lunch or something like that. So anyway, that's pretty much the look guys. Um, I don't know which side looks better, let me just have a quick inspection. To be honest guys, I don't know which side looks better. I'm I'm pretty happy with both of them. Um, I feel maybe this side's just a little bit more, other than the highlighter, I feel like this side's just a little bit more natural. Um, you know, you can still see some of my freckles and everything like that, um, which I usually don't like. Um, on this side here, I mean, you can still see, um, like I've got a little tiny mole under there. You st still can see skin underneath it, but it's just a little bit easier to see it under here. I don't know. You tell me, guys. Which side do you think looks better? Do you have any of those products? Um, do you hate any of those products? Yeah, I don't know. But as for the two eyeshadow formulas, look, I think that I could pretty much pull off the same eyeshadow look um, using either palette. I just personally think that um, 
if I was going to spend, I think I ended up spending $40 including postage um, for the Juvia's Place, the Violets palette, and I think the Jeffree Star Jawbreaker palette including postage was $98, and this is Australian. So um, I get far more shades in the Jeffree Star Jawbreaker palette, uh, a lot easier application, more fun, more different things that I can do. I think that I would rather um, play, pay double for the Jawbreaker palette. I think how many, sh I mean, Je the Juvia's Place has got six, sh six shadows, um, you know, pretty much all purple, which is, that's fine, because that's what it's for, whereas the Jeffree Star Jawbreaker palette has how many? Four, eight, six, eight, seven, eight, nine, eight. So we've got 24 shades in the um, Jewel Breaker palette opposed to six, so there's definitely more than double. Yeah, I I don't know, guys. Depending on how much you love purples, um, and like I said, one of the shades in here, I actually don't really consider a purple. It's more pink than it is purple. Um, this dark purple shade, in my opinion, is shit. Um, any time that I've tried to lay it down, it's stuck there and it won't budge. Even if I do use um, uh, a powder underneath it to help blend it, I just I can't stand that shadow. Um, so this was kind of a bit of a waste for me. I will dip back in this into this if I want that pinky shade. But as for the rest of them, I think I'll only end up using this when I run out of the purples that are in my Jeffree Star Drawbreaker palette. So that's my opinion on all of that. But um, but yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. I really do hope this video distracted you from what's going on in the world. Um, it definitely did me. I feel good. I'm not going to go anywhere. I look a little bit silly with the two different shades of um, lipstick. But the rest of my face, I mean... I'd leave the house like this. Um, hmm. Yeah. I'm pretty pretty happy with that. I do have a uh, new video coming up where my partner Daniel is going to be featured in it. That should be a lot of fun. It's going to let our hair down, have a couple of drinks, talk about makeup. Anyway, guys, if you want to see more videos like this, go ahead, feel free, give me a thumbs up. It lets me know to keep on pumping out content like this. If you've got any video suggestions or any other ideas that you would like me to do, go ahead, leave a comment down below. I get back to every single one of my comments. I enjoy reaching out and having conversations <laughs> with you guys. Sorry, I'm just throwing my little uh, blender around here. Um, if you're new to my channel and you want to see more of these videos, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And... Um, yeah, if you do hit the subscribe button, make sure you hit the bell. It'll notify you of all of my videos so you don't miss out on anything. And I uh, hope to see you in my next video. Bye, guys.